hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so today we are continuing our picture in the magical journey by lazy mary color and i will be using my ink tint set of 36 so i'm going to kick this off with using red violet as the lightest color in this flower and i am giggling a little bit simply because this actually was a 13 minute little segment of the video that was supposed to be tagged on to part two however my phone was like bye felicia and did not let me save this part along with making it um part two so this is the final part of this video actually i've managed to finish it in less than four or five parts like i initially thought so i'm super happy about that and like I was saying, I'm just going around with red violet on top of the mauve and bringing it out still in that concave shape so that our petals can have shape to them. But yeah, I was so heated I could not tag this on to part two. 13 minutes, it would not let me do it. So it just became part of this and like I said, this is actually the final part. So now I am going to take Sienna Gold and I am going to go along the whipped cream shaped inner part of the flower and just make dark lines up and down. I'm not doing anything too fancy because it's so tiny that I'm not going to fret about shading. And I really hope you all are giving your Lizzie books a shot if not doing this image. Hopefully another one in this book or in any of your Lizzie books that you may own. Like I said, I'm just trying to be the catalyst to help you <laughs> get started in her books if you haven't. And take some of the hesitation away for you. Because like I've been saying on repeat, like a broken record, it's fairly easy once you get started. So now I am just going to wet everything after I battle with this spine because I did not break the spine in this book. So I have to kind of work around it here. So as you can see I am wetting the lightest part which was the red violet first and then I'm kind of doing directional swipes with my brush to keep the shape of the f of the flower petal so I've really been having fun with this picture and I'm really happy that I settled to do this one next in my book I think that this flower came out really nice. I really like how it looks. And now I'm just going to activate the entire part of this flower. I'm not even going to do the lightest part first or anything. Just go in with my water just to activate the color. So now I'm using sun yellow and I will make this the lightest part of the inner part of the flower and then sienna gold just for the darkest part and the shadow for underneath. And that is what our flower will end up looking like and now I am 
zooming back in so next I have my iris blue and I think that these little waves all the way over here to the right of the picture are water waves <laughs> like a river so that's just what I'm going to go ahead and make this over here on this side so you don't have to make it water you can make it part of the sky if you want you can make it grass since there are flowers growing there but in my mind I just see this as a flowing river so I'm going to go ahead and use my iris blue so I am making it darker at the top of where the water starts and then as I come down I am lightening the color just so it, it can have some variation <laughs> and when I was coloring this I kept thinking of that movie um, what is it something borrowed with Kay Hudson and she's <laughs> trying on her wedding dress trying to recite her vows for her friend and she's like our love is deep or our, our love flows deep like the ocean and her friend is like oceans don't flow rivers flow so that's how I can remember that rivers flow and oceans don't that's just how my mind works do not mind me but yes we're making our nice flowing river <laughs> over here to the right of the page and I also think popping some blue in this picture coordinates with the red and the yellow that we already have and it won't be too distracting and I think it'll all come together in the end So I'm just battling the spine here trying to figure out how I can get my pencil in there and I am being a bit of a contortionist yet again over here in this corner and I remember initially thinking to hell with this corner like <laughs> when I first started coloring this and I was having a difficult time but I was like I have to get my pencil down in there so I have to figure something out that's kind of the thing isn't it with our books like when we have to color in the spine it's so hard like the book has to be bound I totally understand it has to get bound but I really wish it was a easier way or a better way for us to be able to color in, in the spine of books so I'm still doing the same thing I am lightening the color as I come down my rushing river And I'm just going to continue to use the same iris blue. And I hope me putting the colors on screen is helpful for you because that way you know what I am using when I am using it. And that is me trying to be done with that corner. Now I think I'm just trying to work out if I want to make these swirly bits down at the bottom water or not. So now for the fun part, activating it. And I don't really think I have a method right here. I'm just trying to activate the color. Nothing, nothing fancy. And I am avoiding the bubble, even though the bubbles don't really matter because I'm pretty much probably going to use white gel pen to white those out. And it really doesn't matter, but for some reason I felt like I should just be cautious around them just in case.
and since all of this is going to be my darkest part I'm just mixing mixing it all together um, it really doesn't matter too much at this point up here here I am starting with the lightest part and then I drag the darkest color into it just so it can mix together well I am taking the same iris blue and the color did not it was just not pigmented enough for me for the light part so I'm doing the technique where I tap my water brush to the tip of the pencil okay so over here I decided to make these parts grass so I'm using felt green as my lightest color and Ionian green as my darkest color. The same two greens that we used on the right side of the page for the flowers. And I am using that to make my rolling heels over here. And I'm just coloring in what's left. As you can see, it's a new day. <laughs> Hence my different nails. <laughs> um, it's a new day of me recording and I did do majority of what's left of the picture but do not fret don't grow gray hairs because we are going to do the rest together so here I am finishing up the grass for you and I am putting Ionian green at the bottoms of the lines because that's where I want the darkest color to be for my heels and so you can see it a bit better there and now I'm coming in yet again with the fun part activating the color and I am activating the felt green first and then the darkest color which is Ionian green and I was just trying to make sure that my paper my backup page behind was extended well enough because y'all know me I would get stuff everywhere and I don't want to do that so I was just trying to make sure that I have my paper in the correct position but I think this green on this side of the page balances the page because we have green on the opposite side. Alrighty Rue, so now I chose to do the swirls in the sky in Shiraz. I believe I'm saying that correctly. And I really love this color. This is one of my favorite colors in my inkton set because I love burgundies because burgundy is part of the purple red family and it's just such a nice color so I chose to do my swirls in this color and I think that since it's in the same color family as the poppy red that we did the archways I think it will all coordinate and look nice and I think I was right because when I sat and did it on my own I did a little tiny part first to make sure that I would like it before I went all in and did the rest so with a heavy hand I just came in and used Shiraz on all the swirls in the sky and now I am just activating it with my water brush and I am avoiding the bubbles I don't know why because I'm going to go over them with white gel pen but I just wanted to stay on the safe side I guess because 
sometimes you can um, drag colors into the white gel pen or the Posca and I don't necessarily want to do that sometimes so some of the time I will be cautious even if I'm going to cover something with white gel pen I don't promise myself that but I try sometimes so there is the sky what it looks like so now I'm going to take iris blue and I'm actually going to do the sky so I call the swirls the sky but there actually is a sky in the background so I'm just using iris blue and it's familiar to us because we used it already for our rushing river over there on the right and I'm taking iris blue and I am lightly putting down my color because I want this sky to stay light I think it makes a good contrast for the really dark color that we used and I think it helps everything come together Kind of matches my nail polish I'm wearing today. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> it happened in coincidentally, I promise. Now I'm going to activate my color and I'm just pouring and pouring out some of the water and well pushing out some of the water and wiping off my brush tip because I think I touched a dark color last and I don't want that to be in my sky. And I actually fixed my lighting since the other parts um, I moved it around and I think it works way better on this side let me know what y'all think cuz y'all I just think I have the worst lighting on the planet and I think this way it really works way better at least it looks that way to me but let me know and here I'm just using my brush tip to pencil tip <laughs> technique and I'm just putting more pigment down because I didn't like how it came out I'm just smoothing it out so down here as you can see I've done like all of the stonework but I'm going to walk you through how I did so firstly I will take mustard and I'm going to put a light layer of mustard down firstly is that a word I don't know I just made it up anyway I'm using that first and I'm going to put a light layer down like I just said and then I will use bark so I'm going to use three colors in these stones but you don't have to if you don't want to so here is bark and that's my darkest color and I randomly put bark wherever I want to so all the stones look different. Now you can do yours in a uniform way if you would like. But I just like mine to look varied because I think that looks cool. And I kind of do it with an angle so that they can look like they have some dimension to them. So I just randomly go around. It's really no order to it. I just put the darkest wherever I want. Just in different places on each stone for the most part. And now we will have Willow and Willow's coming in. It's our middle color, our transitional color. And what I do with Willow is I go over the bark and I bring it out into the mustard so that when I activate this with water, everything blends in nicely. And I kind of do Willow at a little angle as well, simply because it helps it have dimension, as I stated before, so that they don't look so flat. Now you could go under the tile and add shadow, that's something that can be done as well, but I just didn't do it in this instance. So now I will start wetting the colors with mustard first and then I bring in the other colors and that really helps it not get so muddied to the point where bark will take over the other colors. So it's really good to start with your lightest color first and then blend in everything else and that's pretty much how I did all the stonework mm -hmm. 
looks pretty cool okay so now I'm going to use mustard and what I'm going to do is touch the tip of my water brush to mustard and just go over the entire walkway so a couple of tips before you attempt to do this it is very imperative that you make sure that all of your bricks are dry you do not want them to be wet because then you will drag all of the color and it will just be a mud fest and be a mess so please make sure what whenever you do this whatever it is that you're going over is dry first the other tip I have is when you touch your brush to the tip of your pencil you grab a crab load of pigment so you may want to tap your brush onto a paper towel or a tissue before you put it on the page but because I'm used to doing this I know to touch my brush tip really quickly and just only pick up a little bit and what I need but if you're not used to doing so please wipe it off on something before you touch whatever you're about to use the color on because it will put a line or something in there and you will not be able to move it because ink tint dries super fast so I did this because I wanted it not to be white essentially I wanted it to have color in between and I didn't want to go all in between there here we are okay so I was very inspired by this picture on Pinterest and I was very inspired by my own phone case which reminds me of my dog is a little fox and that was my inspiration for my foxes so I am going to take our best friend in this picture poppy red and I'm going to color the feet of my fox and I just was so inspired by the pictures on Pinterest that I looked up for the shrine and then the Japanese fox that they do call it if I'm not mistaken and I knew I wanted them to be white because again this is like my dog is white and apricot so I wanted the foxes to be white and I thought that adding the red on the tips of places like that picture I found on Pinterest would be really cool and I don't know I just felt super inspired to do this kind of look for my foxes you can do yours the natural color brown whatever but I I'm just choosing to do something a little fun and above the norm so I'm going to color their ears red their feet red and I used a little flicking motion on the fur if you can tell um, around their neck and then I will do it again for their tail and I will not activate this with water simply because I didn't want to drag so much color into the white and I didn't want it to have like an abrupt line where it would end if I used water so that's why I'm pretty much going to leave it how it is and ink tints work as a pencil as well you know we don't always have to use water with them so as you can see here on the tail I'm using a flicking motion just to put some little hair strokes in there to indicate that he is indeed furry even though his tail may be fire or whatever our imagination wants to say it is and I just had a lot of fun adding this extra little detail and I think it's something that really gives character to my foxes. So you can find inspiration everywhere that's what I tell y'all like I find inspiration to do stuff everywhere and I'm always looking at shading and shadows and I've always done that in cartoons and stuff when I would watch cartoons but I never noticed that I did that until now but yeah I find inspiration everywhere and my my imagination just runs wild so if I could give y'all some I wish I could but I don't know naturally that's just how I am and I know people ask me all the time and I really don't have an answer y'all I've always been imaginative I've always been creative I've always been artsy and love to do arts and crafts like my whole life so I don't know it's I don't think it's anything that I picked up or 
I don't know it's just how I am so I really wish I had like better advice for you for how to add little touches to your picture and things um because I get asked that how do I come up with it I really don't know I just take inspiration from all facets of things and I really don't have an answer better than that I'm so sorry so here I'm doing the same thing on my fox I'm making him have his little poppy red first strokes his feet are red and then I'm going to make sure that I definitely get his ear and his I think this is his belly I can't remember um let me look and see yeah I put that on <laughs> on the bottom of his little belly there And I really had fun doing this. This was the most fun part of the picture for me. Other than when I add stickles. But <laughs> definitely my fox are the highlight. My foxes. I say my fox. My foxes <laughs> were the highlight. So I'm doing the same thing for this fox over here. I am putting the strokes in for his tail. And there pretty much is not any difference from the first fox. Maybe his tail is a little longer, I don't know, but I'm doing the same method. So I'm just making sure that I am indeed coloring his tail and it's nothing that I left out because I do have a tendency to leave things out sometimes and I find that so hilariously funny like how did I not see something it happens it happens And initially like the picture I used for inspiration I was going to go over my fox with blue but then I was like nah I'll leave them white so that's how they came out looking now I'm just going to take a black Posca and just point out their noses a little bit more because they were not that noticeable enough for me now I will take a just a regular green glitter gel pen and I would like their eyes to be green and it coordinates with the green in our picture and I am just defining their eyes. Here is a red glitter gel pen and what I'm going to do is just draw some random designs on their forehead like the fox on my pencil case, the fox on my pencil case, the fox on my phone case. I'm just drawing random shapes and then I'm going to put some around their eyes and just draw little doodads on their face just to give them something extra and I think they look more I don't know they just look not more tribal I don't know they just look cool they look cool they're they are some cool foxes and that's him done so for Mr. Fox in the top of the page, I'm laughing because I smeared his eye and I had to give him eyelashes. So maybe she's a she and he's a he down here on the right. But I smear stuff all the time. That is why I have to put my glitter gel pen and stickles and white gel pen at the end of a picture because I'm too impatient to wait for it to dry. So that's what he looked like before I smeared him. So now I'm just coming in with a white Posca and I am just going over the black lines I already did Mr. Fox or Mrs. Fox now I already did Mrs. Fox at the top of the page and I'm just showing you the finishing touches on this Fox and I went over their entire body with the white gel pen um, or the white Posca because I think I used both and everywhere there wasn't red is where I outlined their bodies because I wanted it to be known that they are indeed white and the black lines are distracting but you don't have to do this if you don't want to or you don't like the look of course you can do what you want but the main point of this color along was for you all to see how I approach Lizzie's pictures and how I color them so yeah
I think they look really cool. I really like how they came out. So down here by the riverbed, we are going to outline the black lines. And I'm doing this as a personal preference because when I color water, I necessarily don't like the black lines because I feel like it's distracting and it's too harsh. So I'm just going to take my Posca pen and white out the lines. And then I said to hell with that Posca because it was not giving me opaque opacity. That's how you say that, right? It was not giving me opacity, so I chose to use my white gel pen because it was a bit thicker and I was not going to have to keep going over and over the lines with it. And I really do like this jelly roll. I'm really happy that I decided to give these a try. I thought, you know, I would not ever abandon my Uniball Signals. I love those dearly too, but these work really good. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just whiting out some of the bubbles and I am whiting out the black lines that are on the yellow, wherever I put the yellow. So I didn't want those black lines because I think it didn't help the yellow pop enough. Here I'm going to take some stickles and those of you who are not aware of stickles, it people call it a glitter glue and that's technically I guess what they sell it as but... I call it a liquid glitter because it's not glue to me, although it probably could glue stuff. I don't know. It's liquid glitter. And now I'm just taking sea glass color because it looks really pretty on water. And I am going to use that to do some of the water on my page. Oh, and what I meant to mention was that dark blue is peacock blue. And I used that dark blue on the, on the other side of that water just so my water was not all the same color. I don't think that I mentioned that in the video so that is peacock blue for the dark water and here I realized I forgot some black lines and I'm just going over that with my white gel pen and then I will continue to add my sea glass stickles because it just makes water look amazing and I can't help myself I have to put glitter somewhere on a page <laughs> If I can't use stickles, I will use some glitter gel pen. And I know people, some people don't like glitter. That's totally fine. You don't have to put stickles or any glitter. But it's just something that I'm going to do. And because I honestly don't give any craps about the page on the back side of this one, I'm not too concerned about the texture. So I'm probably not even going to color that page. So I decided to put some stickles on my water. And I really should have gotten like a safety pin or something before I started to squeeze this out because it was a little difficult for me to get out, but I just need to clean the nozzle. And I do use the nozzle to move around the glitter so that it's not so thick. And that's pretty much what I am doing in this corner here. But I really hope you enjoyed this color along. I've had a lot of fun coloring this picture. And if you give it a try, you can always tag me on Instagram at kpcolors17. That is my Instagram tag. And I would love to see your pictures. And that is what the stickles look like on my water. I decided to come in with a little bit more right here just because it was not enough for my liking, I guess. <laughs> But all in all, I think the picture came together really well and I'm really pleased with how the end result turned out to be. Sorry it's blurry, I didn't realize that. There we go, we focused now. We focused, man. Okay, so now I will take my crystal stickles and I'm going to use the crystal stickles on my foxes. I'm just showing you the glitter in my crap lighting. So here are the crystal stickles and I'm going to use them all where the poppy red is present on my foxes. So their ears, their feet, and their tails. And a little bit of their, I guess their neck fur, I guess <laughs> you can call it. And that's all she wrote for this picture. And like I said, I'm super pumped about it coming out 
how I wanted and I love my foxes and this was very enjoyable for me to do and I'm just going to get Mrs. Fox over here because I jacked up her eye so I had to do the eyelashes I think y'all can see them I'll let you see the picture in its entirety here in a bit And I really needed diamond. Diamond are my favorite stickles. And if I could buy a hundred of those, I would. But it's always freaking sold out. So I used crystal because it's kind of close. Although it has a bit of a pink tinge to it. Diamond is completely transparent. So here we are. This is how the picture turned out. And I really hope you all enjoy watching this video as much as I enjoy coloring it. It was super fun. And I just love Lizzie's uh Magical Journey and Magical Christmas books. Those two are my favorites. Here we are. I, I just love it. It's so great when things come out the way you intend.